Computer World is a publication website and digital magazine for information technology and business technology professionals. It is published in many countries around the world. David Irowitz is a blogger for Computer World. His blog, VR Vector, charts the latest VR trends and forecasts for the future of technology. David, welcome. Very nice to have you here. I understand that you were once the blogger in residence at Oculus. Now, having such a large company, that's a lot of responsibility because Oculus is kind of the cutting edge and is going forward in VR technology. No, well, I wasn't employed by uh, Oculus. I was essentially just a blogger, still for Computer World, um, but I, I was at Facebook headquarters, and I would uh, follow around the Oculus team, and I would see what they were working on, and I would take notes, and, you know, with their permission, uh, anything on the record was free to report on, and I would report on it, and um, put it up on the site, and uh, they're really working on some cutting edge stuff some successful some not but uh no, you know yeah. we're, we're in the infancy of virtual reality still and not all the the bugs have been worked out yet but we're getting there now you talked about how some things worked and some things didn't uh is that at all a reference to the early days of vr testing where they used the animals versus the humans uh well uh you know i well, with the animals, uh, it's essentially you have to mo motion capture uh, every living being on the planet to create a VR world. You, you can, yes, you can digitally create an animal, but if you mocap the animal, uh, you're going to get a pretty accurate rendering of, say, an aardvark or a bull. Uh, you know, an antelope, you, you, know, you know, a CGI antelope isn't really the same. And when you're in the antelope's world and you're interacting, uh, you want it to be realistic. Mm -hmm. And you did this while stationed at Facebook headquarters. I understand Mark, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, is an avid naturalist who likes to go out and find these animals, kind of safari-like, sees himself as a modern-day Noah. Well, he does, but he does that in virtual reality. Uh, uh, the crux of it is, you know, he wears no pants in the office, and uh, you don't see him that much. There's pictures of him everywhere. Uh, you know, I, I tried to sneak a picture of myself up on the wall. They took it right down. I think it's somebody's uh, job at Facebook headquarters just to monitor the pictures on the wall. And uh, there were different pictures for different days. Thursday's Mark Zuckerberg portrait was different from Tuesday's. But, um, yeah, I don't know if he ever really leaves the campus, or I don't know if he's even on the campus. But wherever he is, I don't think he's observing these animals face-to-face -face in a realistic sense. But were, were you observing the animals? Were you the one there? Or were you just writing about the experiences of the other technicians? Oh, well, I, w I was privy to the Applied Animals Division in the basement, um, and it's essentially a zoo. Uh, they, you know, none of the animals are hunted or killed or cultivated. They're, they're just there, but, you know, trying to put a gorilla in a mocap suit is very difficult. Uh, they let me actually screw the little light bulbs onto his helmet when he was passed out after we gave him many Percocets. I, I don't know how many bananas... The gorilla ate, but uh, let me tell you, he, uh, he 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 left quite a pile when he came to. That sounds very fascinating. Do you see a lot of outdoors as a blogger, or is, was that your closest encounter with with wildlife? Well, no. Like I said, uh, I helped the mocap, but actually observing the wildlife in its natural habitat, uh, you know. It's they're still tinkering with it, but it was all in VR. So I would try the Oculus, and I would try some of their other products. And uh, you know, there were various settings. There was the African Safari, and there was the Arctic. Um, there was an underwater one. There was a, a space one. Then there were uh, AI uh, scenarios where the animals uh, become uh, self-aware, much as Planet of the Apes. And there's a Planet of the Apes scenario where the animals turn on us, and in VR we have to combat 
the uh, the attack and we have to find ways to uh, you know just preventative measures and I believe that's contracted by the government now they wouldn't say it was contracted by the government but I think the government has to go over every scenario it's similar to uh, you know the space division where there's I believe there's laser beams in space and you know the future of VR is you know you go to a uh, you go to a concert and you don't have to leave your couch mm. um, you go swimming you know there's going to be simulators attached to the VR where it's you're going to get wet you're going to be soaked on your couch uh, dripping wet and not a drop will be on you now uh, bite that off and chew it that is swallow it and spit it out I I don't really want uh, can you swallow the VR will it be oh, you, oh if you dr- if you drown in VR you drown in real life kind of like the Matrix kind of like the matrix but uh, shouldn't there be a safety qualifier against that or oh yeah yes uh well th- right now uh the 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 prototypes for oculus um you tie a uh an electrical probe um around your ankle and it just gives you a little vault um and right now they're they're dealing with uh, a discharge uh, problem. There's no way to, to shock the system out of VR without uh, complete and total uh, bottle, bodily evacuation. Death. No, no, oh. no, no. Just uh, pee and poop. Oh, right, uh, right. Bodily evacuation. Um, saliva, tears. Um, earwax flies right out of the canal. That's, um... It's messy. That's a that's a disturbing image that well, you've painted. Well, no, you know, it's people see the finished product, but they don't see the steps. They don't see how you get there, and uh, it's, you know, this is all new territory. This essentially, it's creating another world within our world, yeah. and anything is possible. Um, you want to be a camel? You can be a camel. If there's even that uh, that game Goat Simulator that's out right now that could turn you into a goat. Or if, if uh, are you saying if I wanted to be a five six blonde hot woman in stilettos going to the local bar and picking up the oldest baldest man I could find, I could be that. Yes, that's actually a program they're working on. Um, it's called Five Six Stiletto Bald Man Pickup. Um, it started out as a card game, and it uh, it evolved into an actual simulation. I would be very interested to see that card game. Oh, well, I, you know, I I know somebody who runs the game, and maybe we can get you a, a seat at the table. Oh, that's that's nice. I actually, you're not too far from me. Is is what I'm taking from this because you are on the board of uh, uh you're on the board of the University of Chicago Medicine Department. Are you based in Chicago? No, I'm based in Nova Scotia. Oh, interesting. Uh, my consciousness is in uh, Chicago. What does that mean? Um, I've uploaded my consciousness to a uh, server, and I can be anywhere I want to be. Now, I didn't do this myself. This is also through uh, an Oculus program, um, which was originally commissioned by uh, Northrop Grumman. Um, I can't tell you whether it's DARPA or not, but it's Mm DARPA-esque. It's very classified, but I can give you the broad strokes if nobody knows how to replicate it anyway. So, you know, if you're uh, pirating my idea here, uh, which isn't even my idea, I pirated it. And it's been pirated and uh, boarded and hijacked and uh, sailed off into the seas. Um, Black flag style. You know, then feel free. Feel free to, uh, to take it. But, um, yeah, so I am... Right now I'm also watching uh, Pittsburgh Penguins hockey game. At the same time, your consciousness. Right now, goal. You are. Um, that's another thing. There's uh, virtual uh, search engines that can. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. That's pardon me for my apprehensions. Virtual search engines where you can look up anything and go there because you're still in your physical body, and it's just your consciousness moving through the the space fabric of uh, a cloud-based network. 
so your your consciousness moves physically or through the virtual space yes the the problem with the virtual space is it's not fully constructed Mm -hmm. um it's very frail actually uh Last week, I got stuck as a pumpkin for a week. Oh. As in a pumpkin patch? God, God, if I know I couldn't see anything, I was inside of it. Oh, that is actually horrifying. And I'm allergic to the seeds. So you must have had a very, very big reaction. Oh, sneezing. I've been sneezing. Again, if uh, you have an allergic reaction in the VR world, in the real world, you you come out with allergies. So now, uh, I don't even like looking at anything orange. That's that probably makes your life very hard. Well, carrots and sweet potatoes are out, and that that takes out Halloween is just no longer an option for you. Thanksgiving. Oh, it is. I just wear sunglasses. Um, I stay inside. Mm. Uh, I can't stare at the sun anymore though, and that's a bummer. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to do. You they weren't t- supposed to in the first place. Well, why do you think they tell you not to look at the sun? Because it'll damage your retinas. No, 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 Clint. Because I can't prove this, but there's an extraterrestrial base on the sun, and they don't want you to stare at the sun because they don't want you to see the base. It's perfectly fine. I watched the President of the United States stare at the sun during an eclipse. That is not a, a good human to model your behavior after. No, but he knows about the base, and he was signaling the aliens saying, I'm not scared of you. And now I didn't vote for the man, but you have to respect the office, and I respect the squint, Clint. You respect the squint. You gotta respect the squint, Clint. Well, I, I I'm not sure what to to say to the the suggestion that there is an alien base in the sun. I feel like we would have found it. At, well, at nobody. Some point. Well, no, nobody's looking at it. Well, pe- people are looking at it. We have multiple telescopes and images. And... No, no, it's it's again, uh, it's an astral projection, Clint. You uh, you come out of your body and you fly to the sun, but you're again you're on your couch. That's the beauty of VR, is that you can observe this alien base. Once we map it, mm-hmm. we can go there, and once we go there, we can't be harmed by X rays and gamma rays and. Uh, Ray Donovan's we can't be hurt by these things because we're not really there just our consciousness is there and that is the key that does evolution this is evolution Clint this is the next step so the next step in evolution is solely in the mind leaving our physical body behind yes and and you can become a pumpkin you can become uh, the sun you can become a, a porcupine. You can become a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I could become a five six, hot blonde in stilettos. You could, Clint, very well, and 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 you would feel everything that she felt, and um, you know uh, all the insecurities, all yeah, the pressures. Yeah. I mean, Clint, you haven't experienced uh, misogyny and sexual harassment until you've been a five six woman in stilettos walking into a tiny corner pub in Dublin. Hmm. Haven't, haven't I experienced it. No, um, and there, you know, there are drawbacks to VR. The testing, um, not everybody's mind is equipped to handle uh, the frequency that uh, it operates on. And uh, yes, I, I actually learned recently that you did a test uh, a few years back with Elon Musk. Uh, well, I didn't do the test. I, well, I, I reported it on the. You reported on it. The, the test was done a few years back. This was, this was. You, you've been with. You've been writing about VR for quite some time, so this is almost a decade ago now. Oh, two decades. Two decades. Oh. And the moment Elon Musk stepped out of the VR, he was, they say, a changed man. And that's where he's coming up with all the, the thoughts of Tesla and Mars. And and it was the VR that actually set him off. So is is VR also a way to achieve enlightenment beyond our own human capabilities or is that just a freak accident that happened positively for that one man uh, he just jokes that he's he's lucky uh, a fly wasn't in there with him when uh, he had his uh, his calling is how he how he uh, phrases it um, but he wouldn't really share I know I, personally I think when he went in there he didn't have an accent when he came out he did but I can't prove it because everybody says he did does it affect you in any way, seeing 
these changes take place? No, I've I've had um, I want most of my most of my nerves have been um, sort of weathered down through uh, you know uh, close, being in close proximity to some of these experiments. Uh, I can barely feel a, a, a gust of wind. Um, I don't need shoes when it snows. Um, I'm very lucky like that. Uh, I don't. Uh, I haven't encountered any frostbite. Um, I, I operate at a higher temperature, um, and I only pee once a week. So your bodily functions have slowed because you don't use your body as much. Is that no? I use it more. I use it. Uh, I use it systematically. Uh, I use it. Uh, I use it. I think the you know again. The human body didn't come with an instruction manual. We're figuring this stuff out. True. We don't know what disease uh, comes from a lot of the time. We don't. We're still finding uh, folds in the brain and, and connections. And now they're saying there's a little universe in the brain, and maybe the maybe brain function is virtual reality. And uh, now I understand that the future of VR is going to be decided really not by the smaller companies but by the bigger ones and how they use they decide to use it uh the directions in which they go the right now the two big companies in the tech world are of course windows and apple now they're fighting over each other for control of vr uh Apple is using a much more kind of a user-friendly interface, whereas Windows is trying to go for uh, big experiences, video games, and sort of making your whole world VR. Which which approach do you think is going to last in the long run? I, I suppose it could be VCR versus Betamax here. Uh, you don't really know. You, you don't know... Um... Who's going to nail it first? Who's going to, uh, you know, like you don't want any medical uh, situations. Uh, you know, you don't want to melt anybody's brain. You don't want to uh, cause any anything like uh, neural damage. Uh, obviously, I had some secondhand, but that was 20 years ago. And we weren't even wearing lead vests then. We were just... Uh, you know, our our gams were just hanging out there to just be you know, exposed to the elements. Um, I'm sorry, this is while you were testing... What was it? Oh, I can't tell you that. Um, still confidential. If, 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 I, don't want, I don't want men in suits to come to my house and take me away. Is this a government contract or? A yeah, it, it was government. Um, military obviously, but, contract. Yeah, but these things are point? these things are contracted by mm-hmm. uh, corporations. So yeah, a government contract. But obviously, the government isn't working on it. Uh, the government oversees it and they fund it. So is this the sort of project where you get transported? Is, is this another your mind gets transported or your body? No, you just get cancer. You, oh. Luckily, I didn't get uh, cancer. I got some polyps and I got them scrubbed off my scalp um, still have them in a jar uh, somewhere they're fascinating if you look under a microscope and this is to help the advancement of technologies in well, I, yes I mean I think sometimes these uh, scientists uh, and these technicians they, they build something in a lab and I'm not sure they always know what it does and they have to try it out to see what it does because it might do something mm-hmm. great that can change the world, Clint. True, but I understand the polyps that you got, you sold actually on eBay, and they went for quite a bit of money, about uh, 30000 each polyp. Technically, I still own the, the polyps because they're still government property because they were experimented on, and uh, I think it would be treason for me to sell them on eBay. But uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand how you are so open about some of these experiments and how they relate to VR in general. Well, I've been reporting on on VR. It's a you know, it's the future. It's not the future of technology, it's, but it's within the technology. It's it's the future way of life. Um, you know, people aren't going to go to the office anymore. They're going to be sitting on their couch and they'll be at the office, mm. but then they'll be able to say their safe word and 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 
get out of the VR and, and go make themselves some coffee, take a dump. And then they come back and they sit back in the conference room, but it's a virtual conference room. And you can it's a global uh, uh, system and you can work with anybody, anywhere. Um, and you're there you are, you're in VR. So if, if I wanted to travel across the country to see my sister and slap her in the face, I could do that in VR. You could, but I'm I'm sure there's going to be some restrictions on on the equipment, uh, anti-violence. I'm sure the same laws apply. Um, you know, like I said, if you kill somebody in VR, um, you know I haven't witnessed this yet. I mean, for all I know, they just get a bad rash. But I'm told I was told maybe they just didn't want me touching the equipment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe they just didn't want me touching the equipment, but I think you die. I think you die if uh, you you die in VR. If you jump off a building, uh, your your brain doesn't know. And it, the Matrix, um, you know, I think they it was heavily researched, and that's about the time when I started working uh, with companies that were on the very early stages of VR, and we're still in the very early stages. People don't adapt to new technology, and this is not just adapting it's a whole shift in uh in the way of life in culture eventually yeah i mean eventually it'll there'll be tv shows that only exist in vr that don't exist in the real world and mm. and there'll be music and there'll be uh instruments that you couldn't pause you know the capabilities you can build anything you want um physics don't apply to vr if you make it so mm. that i Physics don't well. Yeah, you can. You, you can, can have. V, you can live in a VR world where there's no gravity. True. Um, you could have. Uh, you could travel faster than the speed of light. It's true. You Instantaneous can, travel. Right. Yeah. It's not. Is it even travel? It's just there. That's uh, going from one point to another instantaneously. It's like uh, taking a step forward, walking through a, a door, and you're just suddenly billions of light years away. That's right. So you have created uh, a personal utopia for yourself, in a way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and that's the beauty, is everybody can live in their own personal utopia. And if you want to, you don't have to experience what we call the real world anyway, mm. ever again. And you can work. You can be, it's almost like uh, Inception. You can be in the VR world, and then you can put on a headset, because you're not wearing the headset when you're in the VR world. mm mm-hmm. uh, your your uh, projection is, uh, you know, whatever they say in the Matrix, your d- digital self or whatever. So if I wanted to, I could be a 17-year-old house cat who has cancer on the verge of dying, being surrounded by friends, family, and loved ones. Sure. Um, but you wouldn't be wearing a headset, and if you wanted to put a headset on that cancerous cat... Um, then you would then go into another level of VR and you could go to your work meeting cancer treatments whatever however they treat a cancerous K throw a dumpster throw whatever it is so are you insinuating that inside of the oculus inside of the VR world you can also go into more VR worlds yes there are infinite worlds within the VR world and that does that not create a ethical dilemma or a problem because if a person gets lost too deeply inside of VR will they ever find their way back out I think yeah, I think if you just took the headset off, they would just snap right out of it. Fair. Um, again, uh, I don't like to speculate, and, and I say think because I don't know. How would I know? I I think you would know because you write about it and you see it. Well, I I I, I haven't seen that. I've been told that this is what happens. Um, but you know, I'm not privy. You know, they don't they don't show me everything, Clint. Uh, there has to be some dark secrets in a large corporation's closet for a rainy day. Are you talking about Facebook specifically? Because they're mostly pretty open about their future plans. They're building cars. Oh, about their and... plans. But, you know, do you ever hear about the failed experiments? Do you hear about the body count, Clint? Uh, I was not aware that there was a body count surrounding Facebook. I think that would uh, maybe come to light. You know, in the uh, in the early test of the ape revolution one of the apes actually made it out of the oculus um and he bludgeoned a assistant camera woman to death god rest her soul 
are are you saying that in the in the totally realistic and I'm the the plan of the apes one of the VR assets we'll call it materialized yes how how is that at all possible I don't know I didn't invent it but whew, they shut that project down yeah um, that could be that could be our demise Clint that could be it um, I, I you know th- I think what happens is um, it's virtual but it becomes real when you're in it and if it's real when you're in it how could it not be real what's the difference between uh, temporary realness and uh, total realness aside from temporary reality and permanent reality well you know I think uh Sure. Now it, it it seems that you you think that just because something is can be experienced in a real manner, it, it can be real itself. And I I'm, I'm I'm still stuck in the the Planet of the Apes scenario because I wonder why that would be something that would be necessary. That well, scenario. Well, the virtual what happened really what happened was. I mean, I, I maybe I skipped a step or two. The uh, there was there's no place for a virtual character to leap out of the con. It's the the self aware ape consciousness of the VR in mm-hmm. the VR, uh, transported itself into the body of the mocap ape, and that ape then became conscious. You on on your blog, uh, you write about many, uh, let's call them. Theoretical, theoretical uh, ex- experiences, and aside from the, you're talking about my pseudonym. Um, you're talking about un- uh, Uncle Fred. Uncle Fred. So yes. un- Uncle Fred and his adventures in the VR world. Yes. Uh, he, uh, one of his adventures is going to a base called Area Fifty Two, where multiple extraterrestrial beings are kept well and the reason why it's area 52 and not area 51 is because area 51 is copywritten and uh there would be a lawsuit the the experiences that uh, uncle fred has with these aliens is very visceral and highly detailed it's almost pornographic um well, was... uncle well everybody and uncle fred's a filthy pervert but uncle fred uh you know he's a gamer. Um, mm-hmm. He has his own e stream, um, but, but he he gets to sample these games first and try them out. And uh, you know, Uncle Fred, uh, he's really lucky in that in that aspect. And Uncle Fred is your pseudonym, so Uncle Fred is you, and you e stream. Well, is Uncle Fred me, or because I'm not there? It's Uncle Fred uh, in the VR world. So in so, the VR world, it's Uncle Fred. I'm, I never go to the VR world. Oh, so I see. It's like your avatar is Uncle Fred. Sort of, but av- I think Avatar is so uh, PC world. How do you feel about uh, some of the work that you've done? Well, my I feel I feel uh, very fulfilled. Uh, you know, it's a, a virtual bar mitzvah um, that I went to last week was was breathtaking on the Titanic. Um. It doesn't have to sink. That's the beauty. That is right. It sunk anyway. Um, if it didn't have to sink, then why? If there is such a threat to life, if you die in virtual reality, you die in real life. Well, right. You just pull everybody out before it sinks. Mm, so. um, but who wants to be on the Titanic that makes it to New York? What's the point? Just get a get on a Carnival cruise. That's actually yeah. You want it so, and that you can change the band. So instead of violins, you could have Lincoln Park. You you could you could uh, this one was just eight tambourines. You could have four elephants and a man with a tuba. Well, I don't know how you play an elephant, Clint. The elephant plays itself. The elephant Get plays it. you. The elephant does play you. Elephants are extremely smart. Yeah, that's true. What if you put an elephant into the VR world? Do you think an elephant would... Uh, well, then there could be an elephant apocalypse. Um, instead, of, 
right? So easily they could have made Planet of the Elephants instead of Planet of the Apes. Um, I don't know which, which animal is the smarter animal. Elephants. Are elephants smarter than gorillas? I actually don't know for sure. Elephants, I think, have a better memory. I would love to see. In fact, I'm going to take this suggestion to Oculus. A uh, smart gorilla on a smart elephant. And see who fares better? No, I think I think they should be a team. Oh, so you have... Screw, screw horses, right? Why would you go a horse when you can go elephant? I, I, I don't know. Riding one or being one? Oh, riding one. I would probably rather ride an elephant too. And you can um, you can make the elephant, uh, you can enhance an elephant with speed. So you can have a fast elephant, horse-like elephant, and you could be a warlike gorilla on that animal. That's the world I want to live in, Clint. That's that's your utopia. Oh, Uncle Fred loves it. David, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, that's the time we have today. And um, I just, I just want to say I'm really sorry to hear about uh, your intern, uh, the researcher Eddie Harper. Um, my thoughts and prayers. I didn't know the VR headset that I sent you was going to have those effects. Um, I know she'll make a full recovery, and I'm happy to fit the bill for any medical expenses. Uh, incurred during this and of course um you know i'll pay the salary of the replacement um you know i've run this by facebook and oculus and they're all on board so uh, get well soon addy um you know with modern medicine uh tongues grow back all the time actually uh our beloved researcher the intern addy harper is currently in the office right now working she was wheeled in in her hospital bed uh she doesn't get days off so immediately after the surgery she was wheeled right over uh once the the bolts had been drilled out from the headset that had gone into her skull uh and she's here she has about 30 percent brain capacity but she still knows how to file things so addy you're doing a great job welcome back addy david thank you for coming You know the days when you just feel like it can't rain anymore? What if it did? I'm Clint Myers Novak. See you next time, folks.